Andrew Sluter here, pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Asheville, North Carolina, coming to you with a video entitled, Stephen Anderson Comes Out of the Dispensational Closet. Now, make sure at the end of the video you hit the like button and you go subscribe to my channel. So a couple of weeks ago, two guys from All Scripture Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, confronted me while I was on my bus route. They got a camera out and began to ask me several questions concerning my beliefs. In this conversation, uh, I was, you know, asked about my multiple gospel heresy. And I was also accused of preaching multiple gospels, which is a complete fallacy and a complete lie. But uh, in that conversation, I'm going through puberty here. I think I'm, I'm developing laryngitis. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, um, but in that conversation, uh, it was brought up about how the Old Testament saints, and Abraham specifically, uh, was saved by the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel, and that the disciples went around preaching the death, burial, and resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ, and that they were saved by that, that gospel. And so uh, I began to, you know, of course, say that, you know, none of that was true. Well, after that, when they released the video, everybody and their brother in that movement was talking about how I was going to hell and that uh, because I rejected the idea that uh, the Old Testament saints weren't saved by the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, interestingly enough, in a world, you know, stranger than fiction, Stephen Anderson, this past Thursday, December the 22nd, releases a 15-minute preaching clip where he says the exact same thing that I said, where the Old Testament saints knew nothing about the death, burial, and resurrection, and that uh, that the disciples knew nothing about the death, burial, and resurrection. So I'm not going to explain it. I've got the video right here. I'm going to show you a few clips on what he said, and then I'm going to show you some of the clips on what the guy who was interviewing me on the street said, and I want you to see if they line up here, okay? So without further ado, here's the clip. Right. There is a difference between Old Testament salvation and New Testament salvation. Here's the difference. In the Old Testament, they did not know the name of Jesus. That name of the Savior had not been revealed to them. So when they called upon the name of the Lord, they're not calling on the name Jesus. They're calling on the name Jehovah. Or in the cases of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they didn't even know the name Jehovah. They called on the name God Almighty. Okay. So... The one difference is that in the Old Testament, they don't know the name of Jesus. That's not been revealed to them. Okay. And the second difference is that in the Old Testament, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ had not been revealed unto so them. They're still putting their faith in the Lord to save them, but they had way less information. In the Old Testament, they're trusting in the Lord to save them, but they don't know exactly how he's going to do it. They don't know exactly that his son is going to be born of a virgin and live a perfect life, and die on the cross, and be buried, and rise again. They don't know all that detail of exactly how he's going to do it, but all they know is that salvation's of the Lord, and they know that if they call on the Lord as their Savior, he'll save them. The Old Testament saints, even those who were saved, did not understand necessarily the death, burial, and resurrection. And, 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 and what does Abraham believe? In Genesis 15. <laughs> Death, burial, and resurrection of Christ had not been revealed unto them. So Genesis 3.15, the promise of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Where does it talk about the death, burial, and resurrection in Genesis 3.15? Does 3, it 15? really happen? I mean, well, <laughs> if it's no the gospel, can it's a man the gospel, be saved today? Does, does it really have to? Yes, if we're talking about the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, then yes, the gospel has to contain the death, burial, and resurrection and resurrection, which is the most important part to be the gospel. How can you have the gospel of the grace of God without the resurrection? Unbelievable. Claim from the foundation. Wait, 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 wait. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. Can you show me the death, burial, and resurrection in Genesis 3? I'm showing you the death. I'm showing you the promise. I, okay, I asked you for the resurrection. Where's so the promise? Here's the other question. And where's the promise of the resurrection? Well, in Genesis speaking 3? over, I mean, speaking over me is not going to help. You're not answering my questions. So, where's so, the promise of the resurrection in Genesis 3? What do you mean the promise of the resurrection? Where You said the promise. Wouldn't that be a picture? Is no. That not a good enough? Where's picture? the picture of the resurrection in Genesis 3? What do you mean? Where's God made the, coats of skins. And where's the resurrection in there? Are you saying that's when Jesus died? I'm asking you, 
the death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to show me the resurrection. So you're Genesis saying you don't 3. need the resurrection to be saved? I'm absolutely saying you need the resurrection well, of to be saved. We do. So I'm asking you if the gospel's found in Genesis 3 to show me the resurrection. So when Cain and Abel brought the one brought the fruits of the work of his hands and the other one brought the fat thereof. Can you show me the resurrection in Genesis 3? Of course not. I mean, where what do you Okay, want to well the then, then there's no gospel there. So you may be asking, was that as frustrating to deal with as it was to watch? And the answer is yes. It was very frustrating. The guy obviously didn't know what he was talking about. He obviously couldn't answer my questions. And it was very obvious he had just been parroting what he had heard other preachers say instead of actually reading his Bible. Now, instead of just not talking anymore and ending the conversation, the guy wants to keep talking. Not only did he talk about Old Testament saints, but he wanted to talk about the New Testament and the disciples specifically. He wanted to say that the disciples were preaching the death, burial, and resurrection in Matthew chapter 10. Now, he didn't know he was talking about Matthew chapter 10. I had to tell him where the scripture was that he was talking about. He had to distinguish between the going to ha the ha from house to house, which is found in Acts chapter 20, where they're going house to house, actually preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is called the gospel of the grace of God. And he had to distinguish between the 70 disciples going out two by two, which is Matthew 10. Now, as you're going to see in the clip, the death, burial, and resurrection is found nowhere in Matthew 10, and he sure can't show it to me. But also, we're going to see how his guru, Stephen Anderson, completely disagrees with what he's saying and agrees with what I am saying. Here's the footage. If you'll, if you'll go back and watch the video, which you said you haven't watched all of it, yeah. you'll find... My apologies, read, I should have watched we, re, we, read, we read several verses where the disciples clearly say, the, the Bible clearly says they don't understand it. They question among themselves what the raising of the dead should mean. They did not understand the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So they didn't, but they were going door to door, two by two, preaching the gospel. Right? Preaching what gospel? That Jesus came to die for their sins. Oh, can you show me that in the scripture? Can you show me one place where that says that, where the disciples went door to door preaching that? What were they preaching door to door? Uh, Matthew chapter 10? Are you referring to Matthew 10? Or are you referring to Acts 20? Because that's where they went door to door. I would like to learn that. I just want to hear it. Well, I'm asking you what you're referring to. Acts 20, where they actually went door to door, or in Matthew chapter 10, where he sends the 70 out two by two. Which one? Let's go ahead and go two by two. Okay. Okay, in Matthew 10. Okay, they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 10. Can you please show me the death, burial, and resurrection in Matthew 10? Anywhere. Do you have a Bible with you? Okay, I'll eat every page of the Bible if you can show me where they're preaching the gospel in Matthew chapter 10. The death, burial, and resurrection is the finished book of Calvary. No, you show me. You show me in Matthew 10 the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Can you do it? Oh, it's not in Matthew 10. So what gospel are they preaching then? What, they had another gospel? and they shall scourge him and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. Now that's the gospel, that Jesus is going to die and be buried and on the third day rise again. But what's it say? And they understood none of these things, and the saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. So did they understand the death, burial, and resurrection at that time? No. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. When were the disciples saved? So the day hang on, hang on. When, when were the disciples saved? One second. So hang you, on, hang on. you just my, brought up that dispensation. I, I just I, I answer two of your questions. Okay. Answer mine. When were the disciples saved? The moment they believed. Okay, when did they believe? Believe in what? Believe in what? Believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus what? Just believe in Jesus. So as soon as they were they were saved, as soon as they believed that. And so you have to understand that, that the 12 disciples here, isn't the Bible clear that none of them grasped? The death, burial, and resurrection. So, folks, you can see very clearly there that the guy couldn't answer my question. He did not know when the disciples got saved. And then he, when he said they got saved, when they believed the death, burial, and resurrection, you know, I showed you there the clip that Stephen Anderson even understands that before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, nobody was trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection. They simply did not have the understanding of that gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, I got to give it to Anderson. I mean, hats off to Anderson. The guy, you know, understood what was being said there in Luke 18. He clearly said that the disciples were not, uh, you know, uh, believing or trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection at that time. And we're in 100% agreement. Hats off to him. Whether he got that from, you know, watching my broadcast or whether he got that from just, you know, reading the Bible on his own. Whatever. I don't care. He said it. There you have it. Um, but then... <clears throat> Excuse me. 
in that clip of him preaching, he then just goes on a wild tangent on why there's still only one gospel. And I'm going to show you the clip, and then I'm going to come back for my final remarks on what he said and show you that there's no way in the world that these people were saved by the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel of the grace of God. Now, this is where the stupidity comes in where people say, oh, there's d multiple gospels. There's three gospels. There's a different gospel in the Old Testament. Isn't it? No, no, wrong. There's only one gospel. Right. It's just in the Old Testament, they didn't know as much detail about that gospel. In the New Testament, we know more details, but it's the same gospel. So after saying that the Old Testament saints and even the New Testament saints up to the disciples didn't understand the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Stephen Anderson still goes on to say, there's only one gospel, and they were all saved by that one gospel. Now, folks, the problem is, is that you cannot be saved by something you don't understand, yet alone even believe. Now, watch this. Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 19. This is the parable of the sower, and he's talking about the seed which fell by the wayside. He says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Now, if you cross reference that over to Luke chapter number 8, and verse number 12, this is the same story, a parallel passage. It says in Luke 8, 12, Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So folks, the scripture is very clear that in order for you to believe something and be saved by it, you have to first understand it. And you are going to have a hard time telling me how those Old Testament saints and those New Testament disciples got saved by something they did not even understand. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was very thorough. There's going to be a link in the descriptions to these two videos, the one about Anderson and the one where they approached me on the street, just so you can see that I didn't purposely edit anything out to be deceitful or to try to somehow seemingly change what they believe in the editing process. It's very clear what they believe. It's very clear in the videos. So anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, God bless you is my prayer.